also said she was gonna bring me my shit there for the record. Oh baby, I like it bro. Who take the love the one killer be and he ain't for the kill now? Yeah, baby, I like it, bro. Top that down, that's all around. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Give me the mic so I can take her away. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Lady Freedom here coming at you with another raw narrative. Today is Friday, October 25th, 2024 and Sebastian Rogers is still missing. He has been missing now for eight months today. Before we get into today's video, I would like to put a brief disclaimer on today. I know that in the YouTube world, we're all very familiar with terms like allegedly, in my opinion, so on and so forth. Now, silly me, I know I'm a new creator, but I did think that when I put my name out there, and it says right in my screen name or my handle is Lady Freedom's Raw Narratives. So basically a narrative is a story and it's a story from my point of view. And so I thought that when I put that in my channel name that people would automatically know that these are all of my opinions. I am in no way, shape or form connected to nor am I affiliated with any other channels. I do support certain channels and the content that they put out because I find it to be interesting, intriguing, thought-provoking, and even sometimes controversial. And so I will include those clips in my videos. But just because I put these clips in my videos, that doesn't mean that I am in any way affiliated with these other channels, nor are they affiliated with me. It's just pertaining to the Sebastian Rogers case, and this is the content and the interviews and the opinions of other channels and if I include them in there it is just to demonstrate what other people are saying and thinking because I want you to get the entire picture as I'm showing you these raw narratives from my point of view I want you to be able to watch them and I want you to be able to come up with your own conclusions ideas questions answers sometimes maybe even solutions and that's what I think is so valuable about the true crime community and that's why I show value and I show these clips in my videos because they're valuable to what I'm trying to portray in these narratives. The way that I'm telling this story is coming from my point of view but I'm using all of this other content to help you create your own point of view. I see the value in context I believe that context matters, and so when I take things out of context, I will always show you that I'm doing that with a transition. I try to keep the videos that I make in order, and so I'm not taking something that was said way farther into the interview and attaching it to something just so I can fit my narrative, and I feel very strongly about this because if I'm only showing you a certain tiny clip of something, it can be taken out of context very easily. And so this is the reason why my narratives tend to be a lot longer than most. I know a lot of clip channels will clip these parts in and just make like a three minute video, a five minute or 10, 20 minute video, which is very digestible and it's easy for everybody to watch quickly. But I'm not so much interested in that aspect as I'm interested in you seeing this full context so that you can make a better informed opinion. I also take this into consideration when I am editing someone else's interview. So if it is a question that can be taken out of context, I will put the interviewer in there and have them ask the question or I will put it up on the screen. And I believe that that's important because of the person's response to that question and what their answer is can always be formed differently and it can be framed out differently depending on what the question actually was. And so I will end up keeping that in there and showing that so that way you can see 
what the actual question was versus what the answer was. And I, I find a lot of value in that as well. We all have the power and the control to run our channels however we see fit to run them. And I don't knock other creators for what they are doing out there. I don't think there is any right or wrong way to cover a case. However, I do think that some of the creators and what I was reading over in the RICO filing have taken things way too far. And I also believe that there are a lot of people out there that are okay with running with false narratives rather than seeking out the truth and trying to decipher what that is based on facts versus something that they heard online. I just want to send out all of my love to all of the new subscribers out there and then most definitely to anyone out there who has supported me from the beginning and even in the middle of me building this channel. It means the world to me because the community that we have built together is very smart. We are very kind to each other and we also know how to stand up for ourselves and one another. And in this particular climate, in this case, in this situation, I think that that speaks volumes about what kind of character the people in this community have. And I am just so very grateful to have all of you here with me. So let's continue with that and let's keep it going. Let's keep the conversations and comments smart. And also let's make sure that we're not showing hate to anybody anywhere. We don't know what others are going through. They don't know what we're going through. This is a very heated discussion in case the subject matter is very grim, especially going into this eight month mark. And so I would just urge everyone to show compassion and kindness as much as possible. And I will do the same. Let's find Sebastian. This is when it gets serious. This is wrong. Yeah, baby, I like it. It's raw. That's raw. You're gonna kill someone. Madam, stone cold and it's raw. Oh, fucking hell. Gentlemen! Raw! It's raw. It's raw, yeah? Yes, chef. You can be pissed off, you get every fucking right to be pissed off, you know that? Yes? Yes, chef. It's fucking raw! I get freaky dicky raw! Look at that! It's stone cold and it's raw! Then it's pinker than your lipstick! That is raw. That is raw, chef. Oh. Raw! They went out flipping on the plate because it's so raw. Bah. Raw! Sebastian deserves a restraining order from those two. Psychopaths. Inside this beautiful neighborhood in Hendersonville, Tennessee, there is an unsolved mystery. It was a Sunday night going into a Monday morning, and 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers was supposed to be inside his home sleeping. His mother, Katie Proudfoot, says he went to bed at 9, but was making some noise around 10, including a thud sound. Katie told him to go to sleep. She went to bed at midnight, then at 6 a.m. Katie woke up. She went to his room to get him ready for school, but Sebastian was gone. She searched the house and he was nowhere to be found. Sebastian's stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, was not home. And Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, was at work about 45 minutes away. Police responded and began trying to figure out what happened. That was February 26, 2024. And as days, weeks, and months have passed, still no sign of Sebastian. No sign of foul play and no answers about what happened. YouTuber Bohorn Betty is back in court accused of harassing the family of missing teen Sebastian Rogers. Today's hearing for Andra Griffin, also known as Bullhorn Betty, just started moments ago before Judge Ron Blanton. 
I've been listening in. It's following up to another hearing last month where Sebastian Rogers' family accused Griffin of harassing and stalking the missing teen's mom and step-grandparents. It all started when 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared on February 26th. A month later, true crime social media influencer Bullhorn Betty began posting videos about the case. In July, Sebastian's mother filed an order of protection against Betty. The following month, Betty, whose real name is Andrew Griffin, was arrested for violating that order. All of that brings us to today. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry was in the courtroom. Tensions ran high in the courtroom after the judge ruled in favor of the fourth order of protection against YouTuber Andrew Griffin. This decision comes a month after Griffin was last in court for three different order of protections filed against her. Sebastian Rogers disappeared from Hendersonville back in February. Court documents claim Bullhorn Betty violated three separate orders of protection by mentioning the family on a live stream. It's also worth noting today's hearing in Sumner County is for Griffin's civil case. A separate criminal case against her will be heard in November. Nicole. In today's video, we are going to go over the courtroom drama that has unfolded between The Feet versus BHB. And if you haven't watched the first video, I highly suggest watching that first. That will go over many of the things that transpired up to this point. We're going to do something a little different today. So I'm going to brief commentary right now, and then I'm going to pop in throughout the video with my opinions. But first, I want to go over this video that Spirit Seeker Squad, she is a YouTuber. She's amazing. Definitely go check her out. She put together this video showing what actually happened when BHB encountered Terry Bowersox. Bullhorn Betty was live while in Tennessee on June 25th, 2024. She had been hanging Sebastian Rogers flyers all around town. She pulled over to talk to an officer whom was called to check on her. As they talked, Terry Bowersox drove by. And as we see play out in the video, she includes the date of the live and the timestamp that is being referred to. She also says that she slowed the video down by about five times. And she also makes it very clear that we are watching for Terry Bauer socks to come through the first time that he does come through. And as you can see here in the video, he does in fact drive by in the same direction that he does the first time. So she timestamps this. She does say to note where he's driving. Also, I'm asking you to note the timestamp. And then we see him driving by again in the same direction, which leads me to believe, and the only logical conclusion would be that he definitely circled around and drove past her again. As we're looking at the video and the timestamping, Bullhorn Betty gets back into the car, and she is very upset, and rightfully so. Let's watch. Disgusting and nasty and horrible and evil they are. You know who is causing all the threats in this community for people searching? Chris and Katie Proudfoot and their cohorts. That my friend is who is threatening the people of this community that come in. They threatened me. They threatened me. Okay, I'm in, a pro I'm in a public place. Yes, Why are you harassing me and following me? 
Why are you harassing me and following me when I'm conducting business? How can I be following you? You just were in the plaza. You've been following me, sir. You guys have been harassing me and threatening me for two days. Prove it. Prove it. I am right here, sir. Right here, sir. Prove it? Yeah. I did just prove it, asshole. The proof is in the pudding. In this temporary order of protection obtained by News 2, Christopher Proudfoot claims that Andrew Griffin stalked and harassed him and his family. The defense for Griffin argued for this first event amendment rights of the YouTuber, saying she expresses only her opinion and has covered multiple missing persons cases in a similar matter. Griffin testified several times, saying she never initiated direct contact with Christopher or had ever met him. In response, the prosecution submitted a nine minute video as evidence of Griffin's prior YouTube videos. In one of the clips, you can see Griffin as she shares her opinion, saying she indicated Sebastian Sebastian's mom and dad had the knowledge of how to dispose of a body. She added she believes they may have had something to do with Sebastian's disappearance. It is important to note that law enforcement has not said any foul play was involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. Christopher took the stand next, saying he felt threatened by Griffin. When your client goes to my job, my house, my campsites, yes, that is stalking. Beyond that, you just testified to, have you ever spoken or communicated with Mr. Proudfoot in any form? No, sir. Do you recognize him? Only by uh, uh, interviews on media as well as alternative media. Are you talking about your interviews or other media? Other inter people. I've never met him in person. Okay. After an almost four hour hearing, the judge ruled in favor of Christopher Proudfoot's order of protection. At this time, Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian's step grandparents have all obtained protection orders against the YouTuber. Now, the YouTuber is set to be back in court on November 20th for six counts of a protection order violation. In Gallatin, Caitlin Quisenberry, News 2. Joshua Diaz, good to see you, good to be here. Tonight, we're gonna talk about the Sebastian Rogers case. Uh, there's been some activity during the week. Once again, more, more contentious than ever. No time to waste. Uh, Tony, how are you, Tony? Good. Thank you for being here. Tony I'm Mathis doing, doing. with us. You, you guys been busy. I, 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 a lot of litigation going on here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, uh, how, how was that day? Can you tell me a little bit about it? I know that things didn't turn out the way that you guys had hoped it, it would, but, um, uh, tell me, can you tell me a little bit about what, what happened? Yeah, Josh, I think, uh, most of the people, I don't know if you heard Mr. And Mrs. E talking about it, but, uh, we feel like the decision was made before we ever got into the courtroom. It, it, why did you feel that way? Just, was it just, did you feel that way? What days before well, week before? No, it was, uh, it was just a read in the room situation. You know, you could look at the body language of the, of the other side and cutting up with the deputies and the sheriffs and the court reporters and everything else. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't seem to be a serious situation. And, you know, I leaned over and told my wife, I said, you know, I think that, uh, I think that we're in trouble here. And she said, yeah, looking around, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah, that's probably not a, a very good feeling. In my humble opinion, whenever you are dealing with a good old boy's court system, you are going to see this type of behavior. After all, we saw it when they were in court a month ago, and now we're seeing it again with Chris and Katie acting like it's a big joke. We even saw Chris out of his seat collecting phones from people in the pews behind him, Hardly the actions of a man who is frightened for his life, and it's very unbecoming of the court. The bailiff's job is to ensure everyone's cell phones are collected. It's not the job 
of a victim yeah. who is seeking out the help of the courts from a terrible situation, whether it be someone who is, they are married to or someone they are dating. Intimate partner and domestic violence right. is nothing to portray in a deceptive way as the proud feet are doing. As a survivor of domestic violence, I take great offense to it. It's almost personal for me because I've had to sit in the situation where I am trying to get protection from the courts. And I was not joking around. I was very serious. I was afraid to show up. My daughter was only five years old at the time and we had just moved to the area and it was very difficult for me because I had no family members here and because of that I was completely isolated and it made the abuse worse and sometimes I would go back because he would stalk me because he would follow me to wherever I would go. I did have a friend that allowed my daughter and I to stay with her. And lucky for me, some of the times that I did go and push through the order, I was able to have an advocate from the victim center here. And many times I would have pressure from family members of his telling me not to press charges on him, but the physical abuse... And the mental and emotional abuse just continued. And it continued on for about three more years or four until the divorce started. And then it was a family court battle, much like what Nina dealt with with Chris Proudfoot. He was still able to manipulate the court system, even though it was the same judge that gave me the final full order of protection that somehow decided to side with him because within the good old boy system, it's all about who you know. So I do have firsthand knowledge and I have seen this play out in action in real life. And that's the, the problem. I mean, s sometimes victims yes. don't show up for court. They don't follow through with the entire case because they're afraid. And they don't want repercussions. When it's happening within personal relationships, it's a whole different ball game because all you really want is for the abuse to stop. You just want it to stop. And you want things to be normal, but they never will be. So it's just a vicious cycle. But oftentimes there is after abuse and it continues through the family court system and through the children and that situation. So with that being said, in my personal opinion, Chris is taking away time from real victims. He is playing the victim and he is lying his ass off again and manipulating the courts just like he did with Nina, whom alleges that Chris was doing the same thing in family court. Chris and Katie laughing and putting it on Facebook Live. This is definitely a pattern of behavior and fits that vicious cycle. It just really makes me want to say, how dare they? So, you know, I, I know that there was evidence presented and, and I hear that people saying, you know, that, you know, that Betty what what was presented of Betty was clipped or whatever it is, or that it was taken out of context. Um, were you guys allowed to, to present evidence too? Well, the evidence that we had was exactly what Chris said it was, which is that she had never been around Chris. She'd never met Chris. Um, she had reached out. Everybody said that she had been inaccurate about whether she had reached out. She had left him a voicemail way back in May about something that he said in, in her chat and he responded to her through Facebook Messenger um, and gave her a response. There was no fighting. There was nothing like that. You know, they, they never had any contact after that. Right. Um, you know, and the protective order stated that she was stalking them. She was harassing them. And if you look up the definition of stalking, she did not meet that definition. She had never been around anybody other than Terry Bowersox, which as we've seen in her video, he was actually following her. So, you know, it was, um, 
to this day, what I said in the interview with Vinny, which is that they were untruthful about what they said to obtain those protective orders. And, you know, it just continued to move on from there. Right. Threatening me for two days. Prove it. I am right here, sir. Right here, sir. Better go through that light. With me. I don't need violence. I will capture you on film. I just want to. I, I just want to ask you. What do you think your law enforcement is going to do when you piss me off? And it goes for for the Bower Sox and the Proudfoots. When I bring the show to your town. I'm just asking because I've been very calm. I've been very courteous. I've been trying to do my job without making a ruckus. But if you want to, you want to push me, honey, I'll come back with a whole kind of ruckus that you guys would not even know what to do with and your law enforcement will not be able to stop. So based upon that video and the testimony inside the courtroom, here was the decision by the judge. And again, Chris Proudfoot was in court trying to get a restraining order against Bullhorn Betty. It's not a privileged lawsuit. It is a order of protection. It's false. Outside, it's not asking for damages. It's asking for a party to leave another party alone. Ms. Griffin um, states that she is an investigative journalist and that she reports on news and commentary. Somewhere along the line, this turned not into a pursuit to find Sebastian Rogers, it turned into a personal vendetta. You know, it's interesting that you came to Sumner County to help assist in finding Sebastian Rogers, but there's been really very little testimony by you of what you've done other than harass Mr. And Ms. Proudfoot and Mr. And Ms. Bowersox. As it relates to these matters, when somebody crosses the line, a reasonable person that feels terrorized, frightened, intimidated, and harassed by a pattern of conduct is not investigative journalism. Therefore, based on the facts presented in this case, I do not find the motion to dismiss the civil and the criminal cases under 20 TCA 2017-101 at six well taken and therefore they are denied. Is she allowed to mention them on YouTube and TikTok? Right? You must not come around a person for any purpose or contact this person directly or indirectly. Text message, email, social media of any type. These people are basically not in your world anymore. I can't be any more clear than that. She lost. She lost today. You know, Josh, as nice of a guy as you are and as professional as you are, I don't think any of us would want our life for seven months and take the little bits and pieces of things we said and put it into a nine minute video. I think we'd all be in trouble. Yeah, that, no, that's actually happened to me before. Say, so, you know, her words are her words, but you can take things out of context. Uh, it's hard to know the meaning, uh, uh, you know, in the heat of the moment. Sometimes people get upset. Sometimes people, you know, say just kind of pop off i've i've done that many times uh so uh, i get it um but i i understand what you're saying you know you take nine minutes and you find the worst stuff that you can find yeah fair fair enough and so you plan to appeal you plan to provide more evidence and things like that which is you know absolutely your guys is hers her right uh i mean do you feel a sense of responsibility to to, to go along with her th through this oh i think that anybody that's been as committed to seth rogers as she's been you know, that's part of being a team. You stick by your teammates, and she's definitely a part of our team. All right. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, so that aside, you know, the ruling goes not in your favor, you know, which is I figured that it probably wasn't going to anyway. But uh, and a lot of that, by the way, because I don't really feel like Chris is scared of Betty at all. Um, at all. I, and I, I think that. It was nothing more than maybe drum up another charge on her, try to humiliate her a little more, uh, you know, put her through the ring or kind of payback for, you know, maybe things that she said about them or uh, the, the way that she she feels about them. And I do think it was a bit of a, retali a retaliation tactic. You know, I think three of the protective orders is probably plenty. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's a lot. Right. I mean, it's it feel it felt 
and it feels like it was uh, a retaliation. Is that what you guys think too? Well, yeah. And I mean, look, you've been covering this case for a long time and you've seen all the antics that Chris has laid out there. I was one of the first. Yeah. I mean, you know, this guy has been, I heard the, the attorney for the Proudfoot say that they just wanted to be private and wanted to be left alone. And then you've got this guy calling in on people's shows, pretending to be Billy Bob Thornton, looking for attention. Mm. You know, he was on a, he was on a platform tonight, a little bitty platform with, with some people. Mm. And, you know, he's, he's far from being wanting to be left alone. I mean, he's not acted that way. Uh, the laughing, the joking. There's a little bold mission. It, it kind of, it's sad door. It's sad. Them kids go missing. Agreed. You know, the worst part, the worst part is, you know, I heard that story where people talking about the parents and stuff. I mean, it, it's real bad. I, I don't know. Agreed. They got no er, er, what do you call er, it, on, that, on, that, on that boy yet? No, they don't have any evidence on him yet. Hmm. Why, why everybody saying that the, the, the parent done it then? Oh, because the internet world has to have a villain. Somebody to be mad at, I guess. Well, they want a villain. They got one to call the government. They need to... That, 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 that's the villain right there. Mm -hmm. Hear uh, that? I, I, I really want one in church, though. I would, I would get one in church. Well, I keep my eye up out here looking for that uh, that little boy. Mm hmm. I don't, I don't think he's gonna be out here. Yeah. No. Oh hell, we don't see nobody out here. I gotta make a. I gotta walk all the way down there just to get to uh, use neighbors. Neighbors, uh. It y'all. I don't know who this is. A voice changer, like on God. They think it's great. Well, that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. <laughs> Cute. You're welcome. You're so welcome. We got all, all the characters. That was that was pretty good. Oh, I got a lot more. Trust me. I actually believe that. <laughs> I was... promise you, I am not a child. I may act like one, but I'm not a child. Yeah. No. They're all like, "Hi, Chris." <laughs> <laughs> Take them long enough to figure it out. <laughs> I think a few of them had it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, they did. A few of them were like, that's yeah. Chris. Oh, I know why you put it everybody over here. Everybody run and tell everybody the big bad monster's got to take the human. Look out. And I'm, look, he's, he might be talking to a man his fiance would talk to him. Yeah, I, it took me a second to figure out what the fuck you were throwing the mic at me for, but now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Sorry, everybody. If I decided to have a goofy night, and sorry if y'all got upset, and you know, try to find the positive in life. Find your compassion. What? Hold on. Oh, you're talking about the people in this chat. I'm talking to everybody, oh, not okay. just this chat. I'm talking everybody because I know they're gonna get this clip and they're gonna turn it and twist it. And we're gonna play this. Listen to this. Do you hear how he's doing this? Do you hear that? Whatever. <laughs> uh, when I figured out he was doing the sling blade impression, I'm like, is he gonna? <laughs> is he really just gonna prank call? Is that what he's gonna do? He's gonna prank call and then hang up. <laughs> that was freaking hilarious. Oh, like he sounds just like. So I gotta tell y'all, we heard the mask impression the other night. And he sounded just like, I swear on everything, that I thought Jim Carrey was in my damn telephone. Like, I'm not kidding, y'all. I know, Sarge would be proud. I don't know how he didn't laugh, Scooter. I, like, I really don't. Like, when he, he was sitting there and he was... He was doing the line. I think, what are they going to do to me, Sodge, or something? <laughs> like, it was like, whoa, dude. Like, it sounded just like Jim Carrey. 
not kidding. And we heard him do Sling Blade the other night. Every time he says Kaiser Blade, I'm like, holy crap. Like, it is like, what was that guy's name? Billy Bob Thornton? Mm -hmm. Is that, the, yeah. It's like he's, he was just talking. You heard me say in the interview, I talked to the court reporter for Court TV, and she came out in the hallway and told us that she was disgusted that Chris looked at her in the middle of the case and winked at her. Uh, that's that's not somebody who, first off, is serious about missing his stepson, and second, it's not somebody that wants to be left alone and kept in private. Right. Yeah, it's kind of kind of like I, I want to be left alone when I want to be left alone, and when I don't, I don't. Well, I want to be left alone when you say something I don't agree with. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I feel too, by the way. I, I, but uh, that's not really how life works, is it? Right. Right. Exactly. So, so I get that, Christopher Proudfoot. Work, and I was in there, and I was, you know, minding my own business, and he started flirting with me. And Christopher Proudfoot. So you know, after that happens, here we go to court TV the next day. You sit down with Vinny. Um, and it, it feels, it felt like there was kind of a shift, you know, I mean, from voicing frustrations to direct saying, Hey, yeah, this, I think that they did something. And I, my opinion is I think, and by the way, Seth, what Seth said, and I'm sure people will criticize and some people will cheer. Uh, my personal opinion is he had every right and he has every right to say what he wants, uh, because nobody else is in his position and knows how he feels. And, you know, I, I've seen Chris kind of go off the deep end this, but, but Seth didn't go off the deep end, but I've seen Chris go off the deep end and people go, well, you know, he's got uh, a lot going on. He's, you know, it's, uh, Seth should be so shown that same grace and, and maybe more, I believe. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And the funny thing, Josh, is you've known Seth Rogers longer than I've known Seth Rogers. That's true. And, you know, you remember the old Seth Rogers that didn't have a muzzle on him. And a lot of people love to hear the genuineness from him. And a lot of people thought that he was unhinged. Well, when I came in, I put a muzzle on him. I tried to settle things down a little bit with him, get him under control a little bit. But, you know, when you start taking the voice away of people that have been good to him, then, you know, what happens is we take the muzzle off of him. Mm -hmm. Right. And what you saw was the muzzle being taken off. Well, I mean, was that something that was planned or it, it just kind of happened? It was 100 percent planned. Yeah. And, it, and it will 100% continue. It's a case that has been kept alive inside the true crime community on YouTube. And one live streamer known as Bullhorn Betty has been dragged into court by Sebastian's stepfather. He says he's being harassed and wants a restraining order. Tonight, we'll take you inside the courtroom and get reaction from Sebastian's father, Seth. All this as we still wait for an answer to the most important question. Where is Sebastian? Why are you harassing me and following me? Why are you, Why are you harassing me and following me when I'm conducting business? How can I be following you when you're You just were me? in the plaza. You've been following me, I sir. You guys have you. been harassing me and threatening me for two days. You better go through that light. With me. I don't need violence. I will capture you on film. To prove it. All right, who was that? What was that? You may be wondering, right? That is from a YouTube uh, true crime live streamer. Uh, she goes by the name of Bullhorn Betty, and she's been on the front lawn of the of Brian Laundry's parents. She's been in front of Leilani Simon's uh, home down in Georgia, and in this instance, um, she was covering the story of the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers in Tennessee. And there was in some level of a confrontation with Sebastian's stepfather's stepfather, I believe. Um, but what I just showed you was evidence that's being used against her. It's being used against her in court. Seth Rogers, Sebastian's dad, he was in court as well. Um, I guess observing and watching, not necessarily as a litigant to this, and it was all about uh, Chris and Katie Proudfoot, who Katie Proudfoot is the mother of Sebastian, and then Chris is the stepfather. And they brought an action to restrain, to stop Bullhorn Betty from allegedly harassing them. And there she is on the stand. Her real name is Andra Griffin, um, but everyone knows her. She calls herself Bullhorn Betty uh, on YouTube. In court, 
they played videos from her YouTube channel. So I'm going to play you a, a section of that. They played a lot more than I'm going to show you, but take a look so you have an idea of, of who Bullhorn Betty is and what she was saying online about Sebastian Rogers' mom and stepfather and, and other members of that, of that side of the family. If people are in this area and they're watching me and you know Chris and Katie or you know where they like to hang out, um, please let me know. You know, uh, if they had a favorite, obviously they both like to drink. I mean, to me, if you know anything about Christopher Proudfoot, anything about where his stomping grounds were, anything about people that he may have known, anything about somebody wanting to come forward and just speak to me about him. It, 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 so if anybody has any information about Christopher Proudfoot, Anything about his life, anything about his childhood, anything about his time in elementary school, middle school, or high school, please come forward. I am very interested in speaking to you. And you know, I'm trying to find out who uh, Katie and Chris are as people. I'm trying to find out what they do, you know, with their normal life. Where do they go? What do they like to eat? Uh, you know, play with. Where do they like to go camping, hunting, fishing? Where do they take a vacation? What's the comfortable areas for them? Katie's got a new car. The lady literally went car shopping in the middle of her son's um, missing person. She left the house. She's changed her hair color. She's now changing her appearance. She's wearing glasses. There. Chris Proudfoot was not at the airport to pick up his daughter. It's time for me to go over to the Yogi Bear campground. I want to see. I doubt that anybody will speak to me. I use this phone here to capture on the nine foot pole. But so these are my night vision uh, goggles and stuff. They they film, they record, they everything. These things right here are pretty awesome. I didn't, I'm good at what I do. It's kind of creepy. I do what I do, but I do. I'm good at what I do and it's a job. What you going to do, sir? I didn't step on your property other than to put a missing person flyer on your post, dum dum. I'm in a pro I'm in a public place. Yes. Why are you harassing me and following me? Why are you, Why are you harassing me and following me when I'm, I'm conducting business? How can I be following you? When you're you just were me? in the plaza. You've been following me, sir. You guys have been harassing. Hey, tonight, Sebastian Rogers' father, Seth Rogers, is with us, and the Rogers family spokesperson, uh, Tony Mathis, as well. Thank you both for coming here. Uh, I, I, What's your reaction, uh, Seth uh, and, and Tony, to what happened today or yesterday in court with Bullhorn Betty? And what are your thoughts about Bullhorn Betty and, and what she's been doing? Well, Benny, first off, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, let me be crystal clear about something. That entire family lied under oath to get those protective orders. This family has spent more time trying to silence people than they've spent looking for Sebastian. We know for a fact that there's no proof that Sebastian walked out of that home. And it makes you wonder what else they're lying about, Vinny. It also makes you wonder what would happen if Sebastian would have been able to file a protective order against his stepfather. Seth, your, your, your reaction to what, what happened and, and what is happening in, in, in all of this? My professional opinion, I would say something along the lines of Chris and Katie did something to my son. They're using Sumner County to cover it up and to hide themselves from the actual law. And, and let me ask you, Seth, and, and we, have, we have no independent information. We know that police are saying there's no suspect. No one's been named as a suspect in any of this. Um, but this seems to be, at least from my perspective, Seth, uh, is it a change in the way you are seeing what has transpired uh, through all this? Have, have, are you seeing things differently than you did before? It's the evidence. I still believe my son is alive. I still believe he's somewhere. But the fact is, is that he was at the fair house last. There is no evidence that he ever left the house and they, as Tony has stated, they have spent more money and time trying to get people to not speak about Sebastian than speaking about Sebastian. Sumner County hasn't come out since April with anything. And Katie won't come out and speak, won't ask for help to find Sebastian. I really have to say that she never loved her son. Okay, guys, I just wanted to pop in with a little bit of commentary. I also heard from people who showed up to the hearing that 
the defense was not allowed to present evidence of Chris threatening BHB when he was going to run her over. So when he called into Caluminati's and BHB was in town in Hendersonville, Tennessee, searching for Sebastian and putting up flyers. Chris calls into Cluminati and says that it is legal in Tennessee for him to run her over. He also had a very scary voice, and I did include that in the previous video, so definitely go and check that out. But because the judge said that they could not prove that it was Chris Proudfoot on the podcast, that the evidence was not admissible in the courtroom that day. So that evidence was not heard that day, and that was per Judge Blanton's decision. Now, I also want to point out that Yogi Bear was the park in question that CP had his fifth wheel parked at. He also said he stayed the night of Sebastian's disappearance. Another park in question is Easy Days, which is in Memphis, and he said that he was no longer staying at either of those parks, and he was also not employed at St. Jude's, according to him, so I don't understand why that was held up in court either, because if I was the defense attorney, I would have simply asked, isn't it true, Mr. Proudfoot, that you have not worked at, nor had you stayed at such campsites since this date? Now, those items in question and the dates and times he stayed would be very easy to obtain, especially being a lawyer. So I'm not sure why the question wasn't asked, and I'm not sure why that information wasn't obtained, because it would also be very helpful in the search for Sebastian Rogers. Now, Vinnie P. and the local news has different interpretations of the judge's ruling. One more thing I wanted to bring up really quick is us lot lizards out there. If you follow Terry Lynn, you know she's our shit show supervisor over there. She is the head lot lizard and we follow her searching for Sebastian Rogers in and around the Tennessee area. We have all discussed and offered or told Terry Lynn to purchase a machete to get through the forests, and while she's searching, it would make it very easy for her to traverse the terrain when she has a machete. It had nothing to do with anything besides looking out for her personal safety when having to traverse these woods and make it through searching. Now, if Chris Proudfoot would have ever searched, I think that he probably would have known this. If he would have ever gone out into the woods, he would know that there was a need for a machete. And P.S. True victims no. don't need a lawyer since the state picks up the charges. They don't need to have anyone in their defense because they are the plaintiffs. And it is a civil matter. So when the state picks up the charges... There's nothing that the victim needs to do besides show up to court. They also will need to testify to what has happened to them. But generally, you don't come with a lawyer. You come with a victim advocate. In this case, BHB is now being criminally charged for violating the orders of protection. However, the, the proud feet still would not need a lawyer because, again, they are the plaintiffs and the state has now picked up the charges. And so it is very fishy to me that they even spent any kind of money on obtaining a lawyer when they were the ones who were filing these charges and these accusations against another. Let's watch. And on top of that, I have the DCS reports that I've written that I have literally took me an attorney to get them. Sebastian deserves a restraining order from those two psychopaths. Tony, now you've accused them of lying, the Proudfoots, right? So. Did, what's the what were they lying? What were they lying about from your perspective? And again, we have no 
independent information or confirmation that they said anything that was untrue or verification that what they said was true, like either way. Um, but what, what's, what were they lying about from your perspective and what's, what's the evidence uh, from your perspective that they are not telling the truth? Well, they actually were lying and it was proven in court that they were lying about what they stated in the protective orders, which was that she had had physical contact with them, that she was following, stalking and harassing them. And even on the stand, Mr. Proudfoot admitted that he had never met her in person. So in my opinion, it's a little difficult to be stalking somebody that you've never met in person. And it goes to the many inconsistencies that have been told by Mr. Proudfoot since the very first interview. Not one of his interviews have matched up, Vinny. And when you say the interviews haven't matched up, you're, you're not talking about, so I just wanna make this clear to everyone watching, are you talk, you're talking about the disappearance of Sebastian, not about Bullhorn 100%. Betty in, in this case. Yeah, the Bullhorn Betty lies were just another long string in the lies that they've told since the beginning. If you go back and break the interviews down from the very first interview they did all the way from Nancy Grace and beyond before they quit coming out in public, you can see one inconsistency after the next. And the great thing about telling the truth, Benny, is when you're doing that, it's always the same. It doesn't change. So what's the, the most material inconsistency that you believe um, has been stated from uh, Chris and or Katie? Regarding Sebastian? Absolutely. That's what I care about at the Many end of the day. Absolutely. Many inconsistencies told about the phone calls, the time of the phone calls, the bedtimes, what happened after he went to bed. Just, you know, that entire 10 to 12 hour period, many, many inconsistencies. Also not rock solid alibis and a lot of time that's unaccounted for. They were also probably the biggest thing, Benny, is that they told Nancy Grace that they were told by TBI not to take a polygraph and we found out later from TBI that that is 1000% not accurate. That's a big one, that's a big one. Okay, Tony Mathis, Seth Rogers is going to stay with us. We've got more to talk about. Um, we're going to take you inside the courtroom so you can hear some of the, the testimony from today. But, and you'll see Chris Proudfoot on, on the witness stand. Just want to make it clear, like the First Amendment versus prior restraint of speech is serious business. And the judge made a decision today keeping her away from them. But how far did it go towards what she can say? about this case. We'll be back. Have other people contacted you based off of Ms. Griffin's conduct on her social media accounts? Hundreds. Okay. How often does that happen? Daily. Is it, is it possible for you to avoid the media circuits that surrounds Ms. Griffin's conduct? Absolutely not. Okay. Have people gotten your personal phone number that way? Yes, sir. Have they gotten your email? Yes, sir. They messaged you on Facebook? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's Chris Proudfoot, Bullhorn Betty, goes online, provides information, and apparently her viewers or followers are sending messages and attempting to contact Chris Proudfoot. So the judge's decision has prevented Bullhorn Betty from contacting the Proudfoots. But what I heard in the decision was, it sounds like she can still talk about them. She just cannot contact them through social media, cannot contact them through text or email or any other way. He's got to stay away from them. Um, that, like, I, I, I understand that decision. Um, whether you agree or disagree, you know, it's up, it's up, it's up for, for debate, but that's the judge's decision. But it seems that she can still talk about that. A YouTuber tracking a teen's disappearance is now barred from discussing the case. In court today, the defense attorney representing Griffin argued largely for her First Amendment rights. Griffin said multiple times on the stand that she never directly contacted Christopher, nor had ever met him. She did, however, state that she would visit his neighborhood to allegedly get a better understanding of the layout and put up flyers of the missing teen. And at one point, she also admitted to going to Christopher's place of work. Christopher also sat on the stand and claimed he felt threatened by Griffin. 
after a nine minute video showing statements and a repeated pattern of actions by Griffin from her YouTube channel. It's aired a nine minute video showing clips from Griffin's YouTube channel where she insinuates Christopher knows how to hide a body and may have had something to do with Sebastian's disappearance. To be clear, law enforcement has not said there is any proof of foul play in the case. And the judge's final ruling on a protection of order for Christopher Proudfoot. The judge said she was harassing Christopher and granted the order of protection. The judge cited the creation of a T-shirt with Christopher's face on it and the posting of flyers with the alleged intention of gaining attention from Christopher as the reasoning. Now. Chris Proudfoot was asked another important question when it comes to a restraining order, right? To stop, to, to, to prevent someone from going somewhere or contacting someone, there's got to be a reason. What are you afraid of from Andre Griffin? What am I directly afraid of, sir? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, when you make a video threatening that you want to bring a gun from another state to this state, directly in videos related to me, my wife, my family, that's a threat, plain and simple. Okay. She also said she was gonna bring a machete for the record. Okay, let's bring back in uh, Seth Rogers, uh, Sebastian's dad and Tony Mathis. Um, just a quick clarification, everyone's watching that. Um, was she threatening to bring a machete to go after the, the Proudfoots? Well, Vinny, you being one of the better investigative reporters in this case, you know that if you take a, a four or five second clip out of an hour long video, you can twist that and turn that into anything you want it to be. When she was talking about the things that she was going to need to be walking through these heavily wooded areas, one of the things that she mentioned she would probably need is a machete, but you don't get to see all that because that doesn't fit the narrative. Does that make sense? I, I, I get On top of that. If if she had stated that she was going to bring a machete, don't you think the felon that made the video for uh, the Proudfoots would have actually clipped that in there? And it wasn't clipped in there. One more thing I want to point out is that Betty did not say that she was going to bring a firearm over with her. What she said was that the police officer let her know that her concealed carry that she uses down in Florida would also transfer over to Tennessee. So if she did want to bring a firearm, she could. And of course, in court, they don't allow you to explain. So if the lawyer asks you a question, it's just a yes or no answer. You're not allowed to elaborate very much. If you take the stand, or if you've ever taken the stand, you know this. It's just a yes or no answer. It's not something that they will allow you to explain yourself on. So she may have been asked if she went to Chris's work, which would be St. Jude's, and she just said, yes, I did go to St. Jude's. The same goes with the firearm. Let's watch. And if you notice, the attorney, that shyster that was sitting there representing the Proudfoots and the Bower Sox, when they asked, the, when they asked Chris the question, have you been contacted, they never asked who contacted them because nobody that is on Betty's team or my team is actually reaching out to speak to these pathetic excuses for parents. And Benny, if you actually listen to what was said there in court, the attorney asked the question, have you been contacted by people regarding things that Betty has been saying? Right. The people that are contacting Chris are his people. They're not Betty's people. They're contacting Chris saying, this is what Betty said today. This is what she said yesterday. Well, all you've got to do is tell those people, if you don't want to hear it, to quit contacting you. That shouldn't make you afraid of a five-foot female as a man that has a strong history of being able to deal with females. Now, my biggest problem with this statement that Tony just said, and I understand where he's going with it, but the problem is, is that Chris Proudfoot has threatened, intimidated, and cornered women while they were alone, and he was the only one around. And so when we see this happening, it is a textbook sign of A-B-U-S-E, 
and it does not need to be tolerated, especially through the courts. But now we have Mr. Proudfoot has obtained these protection orders along with Terry Bowersox, who we saw in the video was the one who was actually following after Betty and circled around to further follow her and, in my opinion, stalk her. And so I don't think any of this is right. I definitely don't think that Chris is a victim. I definitely think that Sebastian is a victim, and so are the many women that have had to deal with Chris Proudfoot. Let's watch. So let, let, let's refocus now and, and get back to where what this is really about, which is finding y your son, Seth. So Sebastian, what, uh, Sebastian I'm sorry. Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, to find Sebastian. Um, your relationship with your with Sebastian's mom seems at this point is is completely non-existent. I know early on there was talk about trying to work together and it seemed like you were trying to come together to, to do something, but that that just doesn't exist. Right. So 60 days. And still zero sign, no clues, no, no nothing. Now over the past weekend, there's been many vigils. There have been many prayer vigils of or candle vigils or some sort of ink, some sort of variation of a, a vigil for Sebastian Rogers. Proudfoots haven't seen haven't been seen at any of them. In fact, Proudfoots haven't even been seen at any of the moments when volunteers have come together to do uh, to search areas, etc. We haven't seen the Proudfoots at all. Let's not forget their actions are speaking a lot louder than their words too. jumping in RVs, going on vacations, going and shopping for Harleys and whatnot. At this vigil that happened this past weekend, Chris Proudfoot allegedly shows up to the vigil, which, of course, a lot of people would sit there and go, yay, you know, finally something. It was alleged in exchange of words that there was a heated exchange of words between the two. But at the end of it, regardless of them talking about whatever differences they had, somehow the conversation came out of we should unite. We should join forces. The Proudfoots and the Rogers finally make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Of course, Seth Rogers went to a video, said, hey, we're doing this because it's a, it, we're setting our egos aside. It's about finding it's about finding Sebastian Rogers, which I completely in 110 percent agree. And he said, if anybody has a problem with that, they can F off. All right. He said what he said. I get what he was trying to say. I know a lot of people felt some type of way about that for sure. But one thing that I thought was very interesting, which should not be overshadowed by a video of a in pa very passionate father who is at his own wit's end trying to find where the hell his son is. What shouldn't be over overshadowed is the fact that they have agreed to step together and work as a team to find Sebastian Rogers. Is this alliance, this alleged alliance, we'll just, we'll just say alleged alliance. Is this alleged alliance really an alliance? Or is one side trying to play the other? One side isn't really being, isn't contributing to the agreement that was recently made a few days ago. But as we sit here tonight, the search for Sebastian Rogers continues. He has not been found. His dad will join us live next. In Hendersonville, Tennessee, that's near Nashville, his mother, Katie Proudfoot, discovered he was missing from his room um, around six o'clock in the morning. Is when she says he was went missing. Um, there's like no no evidence of anything here. So please take a look at the picture. Go on your social media and and find a picture of him and share it because we've got to share this everywhere. Um, important note also: April 26th at 7:30 uh, will be light the path for Sebastian Memorial Park in Hendersonville. It's on Main Street. The bridge will be lit up in Sebastian's favorite color, uh, which is green. Let's, let's start with what we're looking at here, light the path. Uh, give us a little more information about it, um, what's, what, what, what it's about, and, and I wanna know why green was, or is Sebastian's favorite color. He just likes green. It's been his favorite color for as long as, you know, one of the first things, conversations is like, what's your favorite color? And he chose green and he's has stuck with it. So for the last, you know, 12 years, always been green with him so hopefully 
would you like the path in green? And they wouldn't let me get a Batman signal. So hmm. we'll just go ahead and use glow sticks and light bags and it'll be two months. Another announcement that, that I, I saw you made hmm. um, is that you are now working with Chris and Katie. Chris, his stepfather, and Katie, um, his mom. So um, all of you are now putting aside your differences and, and working together? Chris approached me at the vigil last weekend and asked if you know we could drop our, our egos and work together to find Sebastian. And I told him as long as he's willing to help, I'll take any of the help I can get. You know, my ego is not enough to stop me from, from accepting help to try to find my son. And, and how has that developed? Is, is, is the help there from Chris and Katie? I've been sending Chris and Katie emails for things that I already have in the works. I'm currently waiting on Chris to approve what I've sent to him. If he doesn't approve it, then, you know. What, what type of... He also said that he's waiting on approval from CP. Chris Proudfoot. He's still waiting for approval. Remember, okay, this interview happened yesterday, last night, Wednesday. The vigil was last weekend. We're about to enter into another weekend. And he still hasn't gotten anything from them yet? Here's the information that we have gotten from police. While Seth is going, okay, here are the inf here's the information, and here's the numbers from uh, my, my contact information for my PIs. Here's the information that we do have so far in our investigation. Let's do this little, let's pull all, all of our stuff together, up, and let's make something happen here. But that's not what's happening. It's been days. Seth is sending out emails and not receiving anything back. In fact, Seth is going a, a bit further, trying to make things right, which is also very interesting. But he's doing more to try to show, yeah, I want to make things make sense. I want to get this stuff together. What things are we talking about? Uh, I've got a canine handler that is extremely overqualified has several different background clearances, classifications. Mm. Their, their dogs are everything from cadaver to narcotics to okay. uh, live tracking, bomb sniffing. The dogs are exquisitely trained. I've got them to come in to see if we can actually find anything that maybe Sumner County Sheriff's Office wasn't able to get. I've got got a couple different organizations, organizations that are search and rescue qualified that are 501c out of Texas. I've actually spoken to an individual who wants to be our spokesperson for all three of us. So that way there's no quote unquote mudslinging or anything like that, that we can, that will speak for us on as a unified front. Let me just say this. Spokesperson person has stepped forward, said, Hey, I would love to be your spokesperson. Kind of like a Chris Dingman or a Tony Mathis from the uh, Caleb Harris case, okay? I'm willing to step forward and say what I need to, you know, say what you guys collectively want me to say on all these things, these podcasts, these interviews, et cetera. So then there's no drama. If there is any drama that stays behind the scenes, stays between y'all, instead of it getting messy out here in these streets for everyone to see. He's sending this information out to the Proudfoots. He's saying these things to them in emails because I guess that's the only way he can reach out to them. And let them know what's going on. Everything in everything in email form. So they know exactly what's going on. All they do, got to do is click on it and read the emails. If there's links, phone numbers, etc., they can go and reach out to those people. And what are the profits doing? I think that's a great development. Um, I think that's all this stuff that it, that I've been working on, and I've just I've sent it to him. I'm just waiting on him to get back with me and be on the same plan with me to find Sebastian. Now, I also saw Katie spoke um, on a program over the weekend. And one thing that, that stuck out to me, she said she's getting daily updates from law enforcement. Are you getting daily updates from law enforcement? No, sir. Katie spoke um, on a program over the weekend, and one thing that, that stuck out to me, she said she's getting daily updates from law enforcement. Are you getting daily updates from law enforcement? No, sir. Still to this day, he has not received not one bit of info 
from law enforcement. You've heard it on this show multiple times. Every single time that he's called in, every single time that he has ever been on camera doing an interview, you know, like doing a, a video chat with me live on the show, every single time he has called in. I've asked him that question. Any updates from law enforcement? Nope. Have law enforcement been telling you anything? Nope. He's completely shut out in the dark. The only people that know any type of developments are Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot. No one on the Rogers side. They're left out in the cold, y'all. Seth has been left out in the cold. And I think that's one of the main reasons why he's saying, yes, let's align up. Let's, let's make this alliance because I can find out what's going on here. I can hear what law enforcement is telling them because apparently they're telling that law enforcement is telling them everything. Why aren't they telling the biological father who has rights, by the way, this is his son. Why are they not telling him anything? That is wrong. That is wrong. Unless they think that he's like the prime suspect, which he clearly is not. Why wouldn't they give the biological father who is actually out there in the streets trying to find this young man any information? Why wouldn't they give him any information? That doesn't make any sense. That's wrong. And is there is there a reason? Are they are they not communicate? They don't want to communicate with you or is, is there they are communicating with my private investigators? That way there is no longer me having to take time out of my my day while I'm sitting there searching, trying to gather resources and planning on the next action to take. My, my private investigators are speaking with them. And how many... Uh... But if his private investigators are speaking to law enforcement and he's still not receiving anything, that would mean that private investigators aren't getting information either, wouldn't it? PIs do you have on the case? Currently, I have two. And I'm hearing you talk about private investigators, search teams, canines trained. Uh, is this something that is, is going to have to be financed some way? I'm using the GoFundMe. I've been using everything that's coming in so that I can finance what I can. And at this point, because it's been two months, do you feel like the support is still out there from the public? Or, or is, it, is it dying down at all? Because we don't want it to die down. Sebastian's army is strong. People want my son found. And every day I wake up, God has made sure that I have woken up. My goal is to find my son and he knows it. Seth, appreciate you coming on tonight. I know you're extremely busy, but I, I want to make sure everyone knew about Light the Path for Sebastian on the 26th. Um, it's going to be a big crowd. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and our, our thoughts are with you. I am currently working on another vigil as well. I should know soon if I'll be able to have it. Thanks. But you've seen countless times Seth has been out here going, I'm willing to, I'm willing to try this alliance. Let's see what you guys got. Here's what I got, what you guys got, and still nothing. Remember, he decided to step forward and talk about alliance with Seth at a vigil. Everybody and their mama there. But what actually drives the whole thing home and it angers me even more is the fact that they didn't, he didn't even stay for the vigil. He didn't stay not one minute for that vigil. He packed, he, he took himself into his car and he drove off. Now, Dog the Bounty Hunter would be fantastic for this, I would assume. But what's interesting is we had Laura, uh, Laura Conlin on the show. She interviewed Dog the Bounty Hunter, and he knew nothing about this case. But remember, he broke it down. He did a whole breakdown on that mug and basically said, yeah, all things, all signs point to the parents, period. She was the last person to see him alive and breathing. She says that, you know, all the, all the evidence, he was just like, just from my knee jerk reaction, just shooting from the hip. Mama knows something. And I'm like, wow, he ain't wrong. And he knew nothing about this case. See, hence the reason why there needs to be vigils. Hence the reason why there needs to be content creators and, and the news still covering this case. Are they really working together? And it sounds like as of last night, as of the update that we got last night, it was a hell no. That is still one-sided and that Seth is still trying to get some information from the Proudfoots. 
you know, the way that some of these YouTubers are out there saying and doing things, <laughs> I understand it. It draws in the clicks. It draws in the money. That's cool. I got it. You know, at, at, at the expense of uh, a tragedy and to a family or families. Let me correct that. Family. I have not seen the interview. So that's what I'm going to play. Because I have the feeling it's going to be good. I have not heard it. Um, well, I haven't heard certain parts of it for myself. How about that? Um, but I am excited. Someone needs to explain to me the point of a spokesperson. If you have to attend the interviews, like if I pay your ass to work for me, go work. Let me know how it turns out. But again, I'm fucking bougie. So whatever. Good afternoon, fellas. How y'all feeling? Good evening. Hello, Team Sebastian. Yes. How you doing, Pascal? I'm good, my brother. I'm good. First off, Tony, we got to get straight into it because I know a lot of people are going to sit there and go, wait a second. Tony looks mad familiar. Haven't I seen him on something else before? Yes. No, you didn't see him on a re rerun of Friends. You were seeing him in, in, on the most recent case that he's still on and still a spokesperson for, for Caleb Harris. So I want to say, first off, thank you so much for stepping forward and linking up with Seth to be his spokesperson. Of course, of course. Now, I'm curious, Seth, why are you having a spokesperson now? It's been, a, it's been 66 days since my son has gone missing and dealing with searching, making sure that people are getting vetted, dealing with interviews and everything else. It's, it's time consuming, it's stressful. And when he offered to, to assist me with it, God send somebody. That's what's up. Now, and I love that there is going to be this new alliance. You got Tony coming through and he's going to speak on behalf of the case. Because I know that you have a lot going on for yourself right now, Seth. I mean, as far as just being on there, boots on the ground, trying to found, find Sebastian right now, there's a lot going on. You know, you're traveling quite a bit. There's a lot of chaos and there's got to be someone who can actually be connected to the, to the media uh, while you go out and do what you need to do. So, Tony, uh, welcome to the search. Welcome to the story. How's it been so far? With not, not that I know of, Straight Talker. I don't know about his searching. Yes, Glitter, you could be my spokesperson. But <laughs> I don't know if he searched or not because they went out on the Facebook and they said they're going to make them private and they're not looking for any new people to help. That's sketchy as fuck to me. I'm sorry. Why would you ever limit the number of people searching for your son? But if they think they got it, maybe they got it with this uh with this whole thing right now it's been good i mean seth and i have gotten uh gotten close i've had some good conversations with him i've also had some good conversations with uh, chris and katie um my my goal was to initially was to try to bring everybody together and and limit some of the uh the drama that had been out there in the social media streets as you say uh, <laughs> right and and simply want to simply want to help uh, get everybody redirected and uh find Sebastian. So, uh, again, I've had, I've had a lot of good conversations with Seth. I've had good conversations with, uh, Chris and Katie and, and we're not completely done. Uh, I'd love to represent. I wonder if he told Tony Mathis that he could call him daddy. I'm just curious. Like I would like, I would like to ask Tony that did Seth say that you could call him daddy to you? Present them all three and get everybody working together. Can I ask you that though? Let's, let's get that. Let's get that out of the way. The, get the elephant in the room out the way. Has there been any conversations with the Proudfoots, and why aren't you representing all three right now? So I've I've laid that offer out there for uh, Chris and Katie. Again, I've had I had about a two hour phone conversation with them last week. Um, you know, I felt like we were in a good place. Uh, I made it known, kind of how I operate, which is I do control all the media. I really would like, as I've told Seth and I told Chris the same thing, uh, told Katie the same thing. I really would like them to be out from in front of the camera. I think there's been a lot of drama, a lot of deterrence from finding Sebastian. And really, I'd like to take control of that for them and, and get everybody united to finding Sebastian. So, you know, one of the prerequisites when we do an interview is, uh, as I told you earlier today, is, you know, if I was if I was representing Chris and Katie and I was doing an interview with them, there would be no talking about Seth. And when we do an interview with Seth, we're not going to discuss Chris and Katie. 
We're not going to throw darts at each other. I'm going to lead by example. And we are going to focus on finding Sebastian, just like we're focused on finding Caleb on the other case I'm working on. So bless. I can't help but notice that this guy, when we're here on the bottom, always acts like he needs an adult or like a handler. You know what I mean? I mean this- like what grown ass motherfucking person cannot get on like a YouTube channel and not just be off the rails. Like, you big fucking man, baby, is all I want to say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can agree. Look at the face on him, I pause. Sorry. But, <laughs> like, I can agree, maybe, but it just shows me that you're not, like, a man. Like, ain't no man hiring no spokesperson. Like, you ain't fucking famous, bro. You know what I mean? That's more... Well, he's, he's not, like Beyonce. I mean, in fact, <laughs> handle this media. He has be- Thank he, you. <laughs> he has become famous, right? Because of the shit he's willing to come out on these streets. The very Tony, Tony's got to learn. Pascal didn't educate him that it's not streets; it's streets. The very minute that something else happens that draws people's attention, your fame is gonna like dwindle so hard, like. I don't know. Whatever. To be a part of this. And uh, I think we've got a lot of. No, not whatever. I feel like people should be telling him that you understand that the very minute something that. Like calls for clicks and views and shit like that, you realize that your Terry Lynn's and your smileys and all them, they're going to be there. They're going to do what you told them. Fuck off. I'm just saying like somebody should really. But I think that's all. Uh, well, let me just shut up. I'll be quiet and play. Go. Work to do, but I'm up for the challenge. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, Seth, anything you want to add on top of what Tony just said? His goal is my goal. To keep Sebastian in the forefront. Sebastian is the goal. Everything else is a distraction. We just want to find Sebastian and bring him home. Right on. Right on. Uh, I think we all can agree on that, right? Every single one of us that's in the chat. I mean, even so. I know that there's going to be some uh, pushback, some people that feel some type of way about anything about this case, but we can all agree. We can all agree on that one thing, which is bringing Sebastian back home. I know that I jumped in my vehicle and drove to North Carolina. I'm glad you mentioned that. So you drove all the way down to North Carolina to the the actual space, to the place where this photo was taken. Uh, was there anything Was there anything in particular that you, you saw or, or anything of that sort before we get into the... When I got there, Tony was right. They would not let me see the, the video footage. So I took that opportunity to hand out flyers. Nobody knew my son was missing to begin with. Uh, it is North wow. Carolina. It's outside of Tennessee. But I used the opportunity as I went up there. Every time I stopped for gas, used the bathroom, anything, hand out flyers the whole way up and the whole way back. And uh, kept spreading the word even when you were down there and all your uh, and your path back home or back to Tennessee. But... Can we talk about that for a second? So you went all the way down there, right? You went all the way down to uh, Linville, North Carolina, right? You asked, can I see the photo or can I see some footage? And they said, no. What, why, why did they do that, Seth? Do you, do you know? It's under investigation. They informed me that law enforcement had told them not to share the, the video until everything had been vetted. Uh, from my understanding, TBI reached out to North Carolina, what they classify as SBI, and asked for their assistance. And Interesting. If it's under an investigation, they're not going to show it. They're not going to release it. But I, I feel like a, a, naturally a lot of people are going to react the same way I'm thinking in my head. It's like, this is your biological son. You have rights, don't you? So why wouldn't they let you go and see this footage? Tony, can you expand on that a little bit? So I bro- broke this down for you earlier today, and I broke it down for Seth the other day. And Seth can answer this question as we play through this. If they show that video to Seth, and that uh, video shows Sebastian walking into a vehicle and getting into a vehicle with a stranger. And Seth catches a glimpse of the license plate on that vehicle. Seth, what would you do in that situation? Retrieve my son by any means necessary. Exactly. By any means necessary. So yeah, that's well, that's why. Okay. So that makes sense. They want to make sure everything is properly vetted before they release any type of information. But it's been a week now. So what's taking so doggone long? Tony? Well, there's a lot to it. I mean, they've got to 
first verify that uh, of who took the picture. They've got to do their homework on that. They've got a video. They're gonna they're gonna probably have to get some subpoenas. I mean, it's it's uh, not a lot different than a lot of other cases. I mean, you start having to get subpoenas for information, and none of that happens quickly. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously the situation that Seth is in. If I'm him, I want it done yesterday. If I'm Katie or Chris, I want it done yesterday. But the truth is, there is going to have to be a little bit of patience to figure out what it is we're we're digging into here. When I arrived, I could see that there was security cameras, which means there will be footage. And when I asked, they told me that they were informed not to show me anything because it is under investigation by law enforcement. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And there's nothing you can do to expedite this at all? No, sir. Any word from the Proudfoots about this photo? Do they believe this to be Sebastian or is or do they, do they think different? I haven't had much communication with them since I returned from North Carolina. And when I was up in North Carolina, I had no signal. Hopefully you guys are going to have a conversation soon, right? Um, Correct. Where, y- where y'all have signal <laughs> at the same time. We'll work together. You know, that alliance is still prominent, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, fingers crossed. Real talk. Finger, fingers crossed for that. But I just wanted to give you guys the update introduce you guys to the news spokesperson and talk about this sighting here. And I appreciate you guys blessing us with your time. Real talk. Seth, Tony, we really do appreciate it. Real, real talk. Michelle says, thank you so much. Sebastian Strong, all day. We agree. All day. Just like Pascal, I would definitely, your fan base is Sebastian's army. They are team Sebastian. With their help, with everybody's help, Sebastian will be found and brought home. And I appreciate all the help that you're doing by keeping my son's name out there. And I appreciate all the support. Of course, Sebastian's brother. Army. Of course. We're, we're all Sebastian Strong here. Okay? All of us. We all want the same thing. Sebastian at home, transparency, truth, and just him home. Right? And I feel oh, like we'd all do the same for each other. Right? We'd all fight and bring up conversations and have a Tony Mathis. Like I said, you know, having someone to come in and, and take the brunt of some of the, the heavy lifting while you can go off and work on finding Sebastian, figuring out if he is in North Carolina or not. We're all here uh, for the exact same goal. At the end of the day, even Michelle says, amen, right? Keynes says, uh, CP verbally abused a lady today, so good luck. Well, um, We're I- We're not gonna talk about that. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's true or not. So, rumor milling, okay? And I will say this too. The Prophets love to have him on, the, on this platform to have a conversation anytime they want, literally. I wanna make that abundantly clear, okay? Because They have some information. Seth has some information. If there really is an alliance going on, come on over. I swear to God, if they ever talk to you, I don't even know what what I would be thinking in my head. Because you right here, sir, all that stuff you help spread and just just destroy their image. Hell no. Hell no. Wouldn't happen. It would not happen. I mean, they're they're grown. They do whatever the fuck they want. I'm just saying, wouldn't happen. Sit there beside this lump of something right here. Could you imagine if them two were in the middle, how the chat would be? Oh, gosh, you're dancing with the devil. Let's have a conversation. A conversation. Because I also heard over the past week that there were pants that were found. Can we, can we talk a little bit about that? Uh, uh, Tony, do you have any I'll information about the pants? Okay, Seth. Any information on, on the pants that were found? Uh, while I was in North Carolina, somebody did reach out to me and stated that they found a pair of pants in a park. I don't remember the exact name of the park. Uh, I did reach out to the detective over the case and let them know that somebody found a pair of pants that were like the ones that Katie described Sebastian wearing. And I let him know. He said he was going to take care of it. And he turned around and had him collect it. Okay. Uh, but they said it's not a match, right? There's no connection. Right. They let me know the next day that they were not Sebastians. How did they know? From my understanding, it was the wrong size. Wrong size? Did they say it was too small, too big? What does he usually wear? What they size did not tell me. They did not tell me specifics. They just said that the size was wrong. Interesting. Okay. But I definitely <laughs> would like to extend my thank yous to the two lady officers that went into the river, into it, and fought off the deadly moccasins and ticks that the other gentleman wasn't because at least somebody was able to do something. I couldn't do it myself. I wasn't there. 
Yeah. And I appreciate the officers that did. Well, hey, shout out to those officers for getting for willing to being willing to get dirty. Uh, long story short, right? Yes. Was into him. How would question. Sebastian introduce himself? If you start a conversation with him, he would more than likely introduce him like I've taught him to introduce himself. He would tell you his first and last name. Hi, I am Sebastian Rogers. Or if he's not comfortable with you, he might just tell you his first name. Okay. But he'll still introduce himself as Sebastian. He wouldn't use some sort of nickname or anything anything else. No, he never liked any of the nicknames I gave him. <clears throat> what, what, were some of the, what were some of the nicknames that you would give well, him? I like to call him my Padawan, and he really didn't appreciate that. <laughs> he thinks he's a Jedi Knight. Don't okay. make him pull out the lightsaber. Okay? <laughs> Don't let him do that. God forbid. Don't do that, okay? I mean, last year, he went through, because normally when he gets glasses, he gets two frames at least. Yeah. Because I personally remember Katie asking me, I think I think we replaced his glasses six times last year. Wow. So Six times? I mean, wait, wait, wait. So it's six times, meaning they just kept breaking six times in a row, or like he just wanted to change his swag a little bit? A look, falls, you know, falls asleep with him in the bed and then rolls over on him. I mean, he's a kid. Yeah. You no, know? he's out there playing gym class. And a couple of times, I think he's taken a basketball to the face and we've had to replace his glasses before. Okay. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't understand that glasses cost a lot. But what kid does? Yeah. True. An active kid. They're going to go through and they wear glasses every day. They're going to be going through some glasses. That's some real talk. That's some real talk. Uh, Flower, thank you so much. Uh, Seth, have you ever met Katie's mother or sister? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, met... we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna talk about that. Okay. Of course, he's he's, he's met them. Yeah. Okay. It's Mo been like twelve years since I've met any other family, and right after the divorce, there was no reason for us to really keep in contact. Makes sense. I just know that. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation and questions about all the, you know, this photo and all that too. So I, I get it. That's what I said, Sydney. I'm sitting here like, hold on a minute. How is he taking a basketball to the face and he's, y'all don't let him play sports. Like, but if he's in, is he in gym at school? You know what I mean? That Like, that could be, but I don't know. A couple of times, he's taking a basketball to the face. I, I don't know. Maybe I, whatever. No. Um, and res and respectfully to your group, Pascal, uh -huh. uh, it, it's it's going to feel like a big change, but we have to prove to each other as we're talking in different venues that we are committed to focusing on Sebastian. And any conversation that goes from Seth to Chris and Katie, or from Chris and Katie about Seth, it's it's just not productive. Yeah. No, and I agree. I 110% I agree. Go ahead, Seth. I agree. I mean, in order to keep this about Sebastian, we need to only talk about Sebastian. No doubt. You know, no, no doubt. We're working together. It may be tenuous at times, but we're still working together. That's and, uh, and the goal is Sebastian. And I agree. I hear this guy is like really smart, though, or really good at something. I don't really know what he does, but I haven't heard like super negative things about him. So as long as the goal is the common goal, right? Finding Sebastian, you know, no no mud being slinging back and forth, nothing getting murky. We're just here to find Sebastian, right? And I think there's a lot of- Oh, Pascal, now you're here for that. Is that what you're here for, Rascal? Okay. I mean, and I'll say, right, like, I, I do, I like, I appreciate the shit out of that. I really do. I hope that that's what it becomes, right? That he that that this PR guy that this was all up there so that he could make an introduction and it be legit come across as legit and the bullshit shit slinging stops right. But I also hope that the prom self promotion stops as well because that looks sketch as fuck. It just is what it is. And I think if this guy comes out and starts being the face for this situation, I don't really have an issue with that. Because it it would stop the drama and keep the situation relevant. You know what I mean? I mean, to be fair, you really don't have anything left to sling. So I don't even know why this this person in the middle is like 
needed. You know, like what kind of man can't sit up there on on a fucking panel and when someone says something about Chris or Katie, say I'm not talking about that. How, that like, bro. Okay, hold hold on. Also, uh, y'all talk about these names like I ought to know who these people are. Who is Randy Harris? You know who that is. I don't either. I don't know who no Randy Harris is. Good afternoon. How you doing? I'm Andrea Johnson from DCFS, and I'm here to observe the home visit today. So if everything go good, then baby Joan may stay overnight. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like that's crazy. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you need to be told what to talk about and what not to talk about. And I don't know how you don't have what it takes as a man to control your own mouth yourself. Because let me tell you why I say that. And let me tell you why that bothers me. How do you do it in front of your son, Seth? If you don't have somebody holding your hand all the time, just like you're proving you need right now, how do you keep from talking shit about Chris and Katie in front of your son? Just curious. Asking for a friend. Did you want to say something? No, I'm good. Hey, Andrea. 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 I need to make sure the child can handle the child. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel you. Mm. Oh, you know what? Do not get all up in my grill, sister girl, okay? Is your voice dressed up for Halloween? Excuse me? So what is the status of the search for Sebastian? As you sit here tonight, what is going on? Who is doing what? Whether it's law enforcement, um, any private organizations, members of the public, whoever. What is what is the status of all of that? We have several different, we have over 50 people that are working on this case. Just in investigators, FBI. I mean, been working with the FBI. It's how we got a reward out there. Sumner County, the people that are in charge of Sumner County refuse to connect the dots. So we have to go beyond Sumner County. My son is somewhere, and me personally, I believe Katie knows. Vinny, you can tell that we're a little bit uh, more uptight tonight than we usually are. But we've watched the antics. We've watched Chris smile and laugh and joke in court when we've got a broken father and Seth that's missing his son. Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian and an advocate for Griffin, says the judge's decision to rule in favor of the protection order hinders the search for his son. What I heard today is that you're not allowed to have free speech. You're not allowed to sit there and ask questions, you know, as somebody would say, the hard questions, and get an answer. Those are two, four scared cowards, in my opinion. And if they're going to try to take away one of my voices, they're going to have to get ready for my voice. I spoke with Christopher after the hearing ended. He did not want to go on camera, but did say that he hopes the focus remains on the search for Sebastian Rogers. Griffin is due back in court on November 20th for six counts of violating a protection order. In Gallatin, Caitlin Quisenberry, News 2. And so I, I understand that a nine minute video was played in court uh, to sort of you know bolster the, the side of the the plaintiffs and which the plaintiff was Chris Proudfoot, right? Nobody else. Cause there were already three that sort of by default were awarded uh, because the, the no show. And then, you know, Betty claimed that she didn't have enough time and, and you know, that's all up, you know, all that it could be handled dur during an appeal this as well. Uh, and you guys plan to appeal, correct? Correct. At, in all honesty, you know, at what point do you go, um, you know, she, that, that she's got to stand down. I mean, is it after the appeal or, or what? Because um, I, I don't have an opinion about it one way or the other. I do. I do think that outsiders do not get a fair shake a lot of the time when they're from out of town and, and, you know, they're perceived to come in and cause trouble. Judges typically don't like dealing with outsiders, to be honest with you. And that, that is the truth. Um, at, at what point do you just go, you know, I'm not going to be a martyr 
and uh, I'm not going to go to jail uh, trying to prove a point that, that simply cannot be proven. Well, we're too deep into it now to turn back, Josh. I mean, we're in a situation now where it's not about fighting for a channel. It's about fighting for her freedom. Right. But I mean, the judge, like, I, I don't know what the judge was saying other than, you know, you know, stop or, you know, he, he ruled against her ultimately. I mean, is there a gag on her now? Now the, the protective order that's issued is pretty clear. And what she has to be held to is what's inside the four corners of that protective order. Okay. So everybody says that she can't do this. She can't do that. Well, what she cannot do is she cannot have direct or indirect contact. Indirect contact is defined as having somebody else contact them on her behalf. And she's never done that to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, but, but after, after the appeals, after the appeal process, whatever the decision is, because I think what can happen is you can, you can shoot it to the appellate courts. Uh, they can hear it. They can overrule it. They can, they can keep it the same. Um, I mean, you know, it, it, it does kind of feel like she is running out of rope a little bit here. Well, I think that she never had any rope in Sumner County. I think I feel that way. Seth feels that way. Um, I think that getting that out of Sumner County and taking it to the appellate court, which is in Davidson County, it's in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that we all feel like that it's going to be about the law, and there will be a lot more evidence provided at that appeal yeah. that, that we weren't really able to provide in the PO hearing. You know, the PO hearing is pretty cut and dry. It's what is the not the plaintiff, but the petitioner. What is the petitioner claiming and what is the respondent claiming? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we get to the appeals court, it'll be a more drawn out process and there will be no nine minute video with a bunch of clips. Seth is such an amazing person. May God bless him abundantly. Praying for Sebastian to be returned home safe and soon. Thank uh, you, Ms. Kimberly. Would you let him babysit your kids, Kimberly? Just curious. Yes, Primrose. Uh, Seth, praying every day. Sebastian is alive and you are reunited with your son soon. Uh, much support and love to you. May you remain strong and find him ASAP. Yes, I think we all agree on that as well. Okay, when he comes home, hold on tight. That's what Sharon just said. Brandy said, we love you, Seth. Yeah, I think we're Seth. Good luck. I hope your heart finds help helps find Sebastian. You have hundreds of us who care and you have chosen well with Tony. Much love. Thank you, Tony. Yes, Tony. Yes, I, I do appreciate you coming in and, uh, and, and putting in the effort, you know, because I know that uh, you are working very, very hard and very, very diligently and very closely to the Caleb Harris case. But I know that the Harris family gave you the blessing to be a part of this case. And I think that's a very wonderful thing. It shows the character of the- I should have super chatted in there a hundred dollars so my shit would make sure it was pulled up on the screen. <laughs> and I would have literally asked the question whether Rascal liked it coming up in his chat or not. What's the youngest person you've ever diddled? That ain't got nothing involved with Chris and Katie, bro. You should be able to answer that question. I'm just saying. The Harris family being able to share the wealth, if that makes I'd like any, to any say sense. Also, thank you to Randy and to the family. We've had many conversations, and I appreciate the fact that they are allowing Tony to help me find my son. I think adding Tony on is a, an amazing thing. Um, for real. We got uh, we we not only got the mom and the dad's approval, we even got the grandma's approval. We call her Nana. We got Nana's approval. Well, shout out to Nana. What's <laughs> up, Nana? <laughs> we I, hey, I appreciate it. I'm I'm very very excited because this this needed to happen, okay? This most definitely needed to happen. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about law enforcement, uh, Pascal, when you're ready to talk about it, but uh I'd certainly like to see a little more transparency there and I'm not speaking for the whole family when I say that. I'm speaking for mm -hmm. Seth. Uh but but I would also like Katie and Chris to have a little more information about what exactly is going on and you know i know that's not the major concern for chris and katie but it is for seth i would like mm -hmm. to get more information uh right now i'm not going all in on law enforcement but when i do you'll know that i'm going all in on law enforcement i'm simply saying right now that i would like more generalized information about what's going on with the case uh you know is are they still believing that the kid just you know walked out of the house and took off Mm -hmm. uh, you know, generalize things that don't impede the integrity of the case, because I think that uh, I think that what Chris and Katie and Seth know right now is not near as much as I'd want to know if this is my son that was missing. And I'll just leave it at that.
no doubt. Um, and of course, anytime you're ready to talk about what you just kind of tapped in on as far as law enforcement and what you want from them and all that, you, the floor is open. Just, you know, just, just holler. Just let me know, Tony. And, uh, you know, we will definitely talk because I know that uh, I know there's been a lot of questions about TBI, about local law enforcement, um, the, the lack thereof um, and all that. Um, and I know that there's a lot that I'm hoping that having you involved will hopefully expedite a few things and, and get things moving a little bit faster and uh, sooner. You know, for lack of a better Absolutely. term or uh, phrase, you know, so that maybe you can get some get some we, things put in the light a little bit for you guys. We're we, gonna say, we can we can put all the pressure we need on on the uh, on law enforcement. I mean, I'm okay. obviously new to this and I'm digging in and I'm and I'm understanding who all the players are. I, I clearly know who all the players are in, in Caleb's case. Um, but, uh, you know, when I get dug in a little bit and I figure out who the players are, then. You know, hopefully at that point we'll know. Uh, still holding out hope that that I end up representing the whole family and that the goal is united. But uh, you know, right now uh, I feel like there's more information that could be coming out of them. And uh, when I decide to to turn up the heat on those guys, then uh, you won't be the only one that knows that they'll know it. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. Let me know because I really do want to know. Uh, one thing I want to piggyback off of on that particular uh, question, which it was a very good question. So I pre and all the questions have been fantastic. Real talk. Um, so thank you everybody because i feel like everybody and their mama know well in my world i feel like everybody and their mama knows about sebastian sebastian's case but it feels like even dog the bounty hunter didn't know about his about this case until it was brought up to him all right well i, I can tell you that uh there will be more news there will be more media coverage that's part of the reason that uh that seth brought me on um but i will shoot you straight pascal i mean a lot of these people that are watching this story when they see a lot of this drama that's gone on and to be completely fair again i had great conversations with chris and katie i told chris that he was not good on camera i told seth in private now how, let him finish i think he's lying let him finish he was not good on camera i told him the arguing back and forth was causing people not to want to cover the case and that's part of my goal in, in getting everything cleaned up and, and centralized is that i want more real media attention but uh we're gonna get that it's coming okay okay I'm just curious how in the hell this man had a great conversation with Chris considering he don't, he don't like to talk to men. Yeah. I mean, you know, some tidying up, you know, a little bit of spring cleaning doesn't, doesn't hurt nobody. Um, especially when, if, if it means we're able to expand and get the, the case out there to uh, a larger uh, demographic, to a larger audience, to make it more nationwide, because he could be in, in North Carolina. I hope he really is. I hope that photo really is him, but he could be in California right now. He could be anywhere. Um, so getting the word out there, I think is really important. Seth, did you want to say something? I was going to say, that's why I've asked the world to help me find my son. I need everybody. If you see something, say something. Head up, eyes open. If you see him, take a picture. That's great. Say his name. You know, Sebastian, your dad's looking for you. And see, I mean, he's got to know that I'm looking for him. I hope that he understands that I won't stop. He does. Yeah. He, he knows. He, he most definitely does, Seth, for sure. If he if he's not see if he's not seeing any of these videos or any of these interviews that you've done, he knows it just from the energy that you're putting out. Okay, and the prayers that you're putting out here for real. All right. In fact, somebody just said, uh, Seth, we met in uh Hendersonville. We were looking for your son. Even though you wouldn't speak with me, I still pray for you. And uh, your safe the safe return of Sebastian every day. I continue to use my platforms to get the word out. Um, thank you, Steph. I oh, I don't know what that says about that girl. I'm assuming it's a girl, Steph. Because I ain't seen nobody he won't speak to unless, well, you know, me. But, hmm. I do appreciate it, that. And, of course, any any, possi any opportunity, right? Um, of course, Flower Power just said, please take care of yourself, Seth. Okay, as your son is uh, is going to need you at 100% when he does come home. Um, I absolutely agree. Now, uh, something that, and uh, there's other people that are coming in saying that they're praying for you and all that. And I just got one last question. I appreciate, tired as a mother, I appreciate you saying that with Seth, we pray for you. Uh, Tony, you are amazing. I absolutely agree. Okay, this is uh, two really great people lining up and uh, going for the greater good. Okay, going for the a collective, a collected goal, which I'm very excited about. And it's like, if if you were to take somebody, would you not be in all the chat groups and stuff so you could know what was going on and know if they were on to you 
et cetera, et cetera. So why would you ever do that? You know what I mean? And then straight talker, I wanted to point out what you said. I think Chris Proud feet is a decent dude and has been over backwards to try to get along with Seth. I personally agree with that. And I think it's ridiculous that whatever he does is like an issue or a problem. You guys have have just lost your minds, in my opinion. Like it's it's the craziest thing. I've personally ever seen. I'm excited to see what comes of this. I will say this though too, since I got you guys here, I am hopeful that Seth, Chris, and Katie can work together in unified front. And hopefully Tony, you're able to, if that's possible, if not, nothing. nothing I'll, do, any, I'll, do, I'll do anything to help the kid. I'm, I'm hoping that that alliance can actually happen and you can. Oh, that statement. I'll do anything to help the kid. Not Seth, not Chris, not Katie. Represent all three of them. But if it doesn't happen, it's all good. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean anything bad. I just understand things with it is the way it is right now. Okay. Um, again, Tony, I appreciate you for being here. Okay, Seth. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. You guys aren't being told anything from investigators. Seth isn't being told anything. Uh, I don't think that you do you have any knowledge of if Chris and Katie are in contact with uh, law enforcement? We don't have any knowledge of that. And quite frankly, there's been so many inconsistencies with things that Chris has said. I don't know that we'd believe him one way or the other. I remember when he said that uh, law enforcement told him not to take a polygraph. Uh, and I found that, I mean, any any law uh, enforcement officer that would give legal advice to, uh, I wouldn't say a suspect or person of interest, but somebody that's directly involved, like in the circle of the case, would probably get in a lot of trouble for, for giving any kind of advice like that. So I don't, I don't, believe that i didn't believe that i think it was kind of a way to to skirt around it i know there are people say well he took one i, I don't know if he did or not uh it, well it was tbi always... uh tbi told our team directly that the same if you want to call it advice advice but the same statement was given to seth and chris and katie which is you can do what you want to do but if you're going to take a polygraph just please be careful that you know you know the nature of the polygraph and what you're going to be asked yeah and but that's not the same as saying they told him not to it's not at all the same because that same uh, statement was given to Seth before Seth went and took the polygraph with Nancy Grace. And he, you know, you can call it what you want to call it, but he lied to Nancy. He lied to a lot of people when he said we were told not to take the polygraph. It's mm -hmm. just simply not true. Taking the hard questions. Where's the poly? <laughs> Fuck, I'm making that t-shirt. Where's the poly? Where's the poly? Let's make some soap. Where's the poly? That's happening. I will wear the fuck out of that shit too. <laughs> it's a very different thing to like do this. And it's like you speak to the people like fiance said, it's probably something we'll never, ever do again, ever. Just because you do like, I do feel bad when I see shit come out on Facebook about Chris and Katie, especially Katie. Like I... You just want to like have the power and ability to just erase it before anybody sees it because it's, it is absolutely ridiculous. What do you think of that interview? Yeah. What was your thoughts uh, on? It's an interview. I mean, yeah. Not nurse shattering. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm one. I'm not going to sit here and tell people that we're going to discuss things that we're not supposed to discuss. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Seth trying or getting, not trying, how about using Mr. Mathis as a spokesperson? Probably is a good thing. Yeah. yeah I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with being on YouTube's, I mean, if you're going to use a spokesperson, I would definitely push. YouTube wouldn't have been my first place, for sure. But I guess small steps is better than no steps, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I you know, at least there wasn't no shit slinging tonight. I, I'm thankful for that. So, I I got a question. Well, for, well, sorry. 
I, I here's what I will say. Despite how everybody out there has their own opinions, despite how everybody has their own feelings, at the end of the day, when you go in and you look at the situation for truly what it is, you strip away all the, the crap, peel back, go back to meat and potatoes of what it, it, it just is. It's three parents that are seriously hurting because they don't have their son. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And everybody's going to react differently and everybody's going to lash out their own ways and some have a little bit more control than others. And that's on all three of us. Because I will tell you right now, I'm beyond frustrated that we have a situation we actually have no leads on. Absolutely nothing. Nothing credible anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my wife is hurting. You know, everybody wants to know why she doesn't want to go and talk. Well, it's simple. You know, everybody just bashes. Bashes, bashes, and bashes. You know, there's... Everybody has a narrative, and they need a villain to fill in that narrative. Yeah, and it's it's terrible. It truly is. It's a terrible thing that it is where it is, and you know, it's her or it's me. In some cases, it may be Seth, and it really shouldn't be. No, all these fair. YouTube videos out here should change change course a little bit. I mean, yes, you're going to have your people out there that are going to say the things that they want to say accuse people what they want to accuse them of because in the end everybody has the same question how and why yeah yeah and there's there's only one person holding that answer and that's who we're all looking for you know and everybody wants to see that well it can't be this because of this and it can't be that because this doesn't make sense you know, and in, in, in all truth, a lot of it doesn't make sense. It truly doesn't. No, I mean, but yeah. Every situation is different. Not one, one single case is ever the same. Truly really not. Here's what people, here's what they don't know. All three parents were vetted. All three parents were cleared. Now, Law enforcement is not going to come out and say that because they can't for protocol reasons. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's. Well, and I have if asked. There was a reason to show that we, as in any one of the parents, had any form of negligence, negligence any foul play. Don't you think after 60 something days? Somebody would be in a pair of handcuffs. It's going to be very hard for folks to understand and try to put stuff together and wrap their head around the idea of we just don't know. Because, I mean, people are saying, you know, they just don't disappear. Well, we understand that. We do. And we're not saying no to that but we're saying nobody has an idea yeah law enforcement nothing well i'm sure a lot of people have got ideas but nobody's got any evidence is that a fair statement i mean that is very fair law enforcement has said it best everything is still on the table there's absolutely no evidence of foul play yeah and that all parents have been cooperating since day one with all law enforcement, regardless of what they've asked for. Doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. Your world that you you think that you have, let me tell you something how bad it flips inside out. Every intimate detail that you could ever think of will come out. Oh, it will. Yeah. yeah. And I don't miss it, I mean all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. 
You know, it, it, people sit down and look at a mirror, look at themselves and actually say, I've never done anything that I regret or I'm not proud of. It would come out. It would. And it sucks, but it will because that's what people are trying to be. We don't go out because we listen to what law enforcement tells us to do. Right. Well, and I'm if law that. enforcement says we need to be available, then by golly, we're going to be available for whatever they need. Yeah. Well, and and Seth, I, I'm not speaking negative on Seth. I need everybody to understand this. Yeah, he he's said some things. That him and I and Katie will handle later and down the road. It doesn't have to be. He said, she said, let's point fingers, poke each other's eyes out, and then play this game. It doesn't have to be that way. It never should have been that way. I mean, he's grieving. He's dealing with his grief in his own way. Okay, guys. So one more thing I want to go over before I end this video is Seth Rogers' declaration. This is part of the RICO filing. And it says, I, Seth Rogers, being duly sworn according to law, hereby depose and affirm the following. I, Seth Rogers, residing at Redacted, Clarksville, Tennessee, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, pursuant to 18 PA CS 4904 relating to unsworn falsification to authorities, that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I am Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. From the very beginning, I've been certain in my gut that my ex-wife, Katie Prodfoot, and her husband, Chris Prodfoot, are involved in the disappearance of my son, Sebastian. Chris asked me to get our story straight, and that is quoted here, get our story straight about Sebastian, implying that he wanted me to lie. When I refused, they both cut off all communication with me. They've shown no interest in finding our son, and their behavior only deepens my belief that they are hiding something. Every day that goes by without their help only makes me more certain that they know more than they're saying about what happened to Sebastian. For seven long months, I've been living the nightmare of a missing child. It's something no parent should ever have to face. The pain is unbearable, and it's made even worse by the fact that the very people who should have cared, Chris and Katie, have turned their backs on me instead of searching for Sebastian. They've aligned themselves with people more interested in tearing me down than finding my son. I feel like I am being blocked at every turn by the Proudfoots and their group of online creators. They've spread rumors, attacked me publicly, and worked to discredit me. It feels like a coordinated effort to silence me and shift the blame, rather than help find my boy. In the earlier days of searching for Sebastian, I entered into a relationship with Michaela Cleveland. I was broken and grieving, and she seemed to offer comfort, but her intentions weren't genuine. In early May, while staying at my apartment, Michaela sent confidential CPS reports, documents concerning my son's safety, without my knowledge. She later teamed up with Austin Trevor Sweet, aka T-Rev, and together they used those stolen reports as leverage to control me. They even threatened to release those private documents publicly. The way Michaela, T-Rev, and their group of creators, people like Barbecue Lady, Granny's Watching, Queen B, and JLR, exploited my pain for their gain and is nothing short of cruel. The attacks against me haven't just stayed online. They followed me to work, where I serve as deputy at Davidson County Jail. Barbecue Lady, along with others like Granny's Watching, Queen B and Cluminati have spread rumors that I am involved in red rum of a child and that I'm a pedo. These lies have put my life in danger at work. 
I work in the maximum security section of the jail, and if word gets out about these false accusations, I know I could be stabbed or unalived by inmates. Shrewd even accused one of my co-workers of being under investigation for time card fraud trying to stir up trouble in my workplace. These attacks aren't random. They're part of a coordinated effort to ruin my life and to make it impossible for me to do my job safely. I've long s suspected that Katie and Chris Proudfoot are hiding something about Sebastian's disappearance. Their refusal to help and their cold behavior only makes me more certain of it. Early on, Stephanie Jo Trude came to me in person offering to help but after she met with the Proudfoots her behavior changed it's like she switched sides and her attacks on me and those helping me became much more aggressive this makes me wonder what exactly was discussed during this meeting in addition to the Proudfoots there's a whole group of online creators who have made it their mission to destroy my life. People like Ricky Smith, Kaluminati, Steve Fisher from F SF Investigates, and Stephen Crabtree have used their platforms to spread lies about me, calling me a child on a liver and a pedo. Hello. These are dangerous accusations, and they've taken a toll on me both personally and professionally. Stephen Crabtree didn't even have a YouTube channel before my son went missing. He created his channel specifically to capitalize on my tragedy, aligning himself with Cluminati and others in this online group. This gang of creators has turned my pain into their entertainment and profit. To make matters worse, the Proudfoots recently posed for a photo with Ricky and Stephen, smiling as if they were all in on some kind of sick joke. They pretended to search for Sebastian, but their actions felt more like mockery than genuine effort. A true and correct copy of this photo, taken on or around September 29, 2024, depicting Katie and Chris Proudfoot alongside Kaluminati, her spouse or romantic partner, and Steve Fisher, SF Investigates, is attached here too as Exhibit 1 and incorporated by reference herein. The threats haven't stopped. I've been told by people connected to the Proudfoots that there will be consequences for anyone who speaks out against them. Chris even told my ex-wife that if I open my mouth about what I knew, quote, it won't ever open again, end quote. It feels like they're using their power and connections to silence me, and I don't know how much longer I can fight this battle on my own. Your Honor, I'm just a father trying to find my son. I've been betrayed by people I thought I could trust, and I'm fighting against a coordinated group of individuals who seem more interested in destroying me than helping find my boy. I don't have the resources or the power that these people do, but I do have a father's love for his son, and that's what keeps me going. Every second that ticks by, my son's life hangs in the balance. If he's still out there, every day that passes without finding him could mean the difference between life and death. And I can't help but feel like the Proudfoots and these online creators are helping time run out on him. Their silence, their lies, their attacks, they're not just bystanders. They're accomplices to whatever's happening to my boy. If my son passes away out there alone, they'll have blood on their hands. The Proudfoots, the step-parents who should have helped, they've turned into silencers. The in-laws, the ones who could have supported me, have turned into outlaws. And these online creators, they've gone from telling stories to being unalivers in their own way. They're destroying my family bit by bit, and it's time for this to end. I am exhausted. I am heartbroken. And I just want someone to listen and help me bring my son home. This is my truth, and I hope you understand how much I need your help to find Sebastian and hold those responsible accountable. I am fully prepared to testify under oath and provide detailed accounts of these organized and sustained attacks, including the incitement of harassment and violence, the continuous threats to my life, and the severe emotional and professional harm I have endured 
as a direct result of their actions. I, Seth Rogers, swear and affirm and verify under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America, 28 U.S.C. 1746, relating to unsworn declarations under penalty of perjury. This sworn declaration is dated for October 15th, 2024, and is signed by Seth Rogers. Now, there's a lot of useful and very interesting information in this document, and it basically goes over all of the grievances that Seth has had. He's definitely opening up more about what has really been going on here, and I do believe that he gave his best efforts at trying to work with Chris and Katie Proudfoot. However, they decided that they were going to take a different path than him. And this is stated in the interview with Kaluminati. Now, I have had my own suspicions from the very beginning about what was really going on behind the scenes with the parents. And it seems to me that based on this document, that there was a lot more than meets the eye. Based on my personal observations of this document and all of the research that I've done using interviews from Seth Rogers, Chris and Katie Proudfoot, their own words is what I'm going off of when I'm deciding or deciphering what I believe to be the truth and what I believe to be lies. The way I see it, Chris and Katie definitely know more than what they're letting on. Law enforcement knows a lot more than what they're letting on. And it's just a matter of getting the evidence together. Many times the FBI will not speak with local law enforcement if they are not on the same page. And I really believe that that is what is going on in this case. When Nick the Hat first came on the scene of Sebastian Rogers' case, he made it very clear to all of his subscribers that they are there for Sebastian, they are there to find Sebastian, and that no one was to speak of the parents in the case because they wanted to do their own research and they wanted to see if the Proud Feet would play along and do the right thing. But just like we saw before, they are unwilling to do the right thing by Sebastian and come together to find this young man. Now, with all of the information that's coming out with this enormous RICO filing, I am going to do a part three on this. I didn't even think it would be a part two, to be honest with you, because of the fact that I thought that this would be dropped and it wouldn't have gone this far. I did read the entire file and I also read through all of the exhibits, so I will be including those in the next video. But for today, I just wanted to get through everything going on with Bullhorn Betty. She is due back in court. And in my opinion, I do believe that this has gone way too far. I think it's taking away from true victims of domestic violence in the court system. And I think it is a gross misuse of the system. As I said before, and I was pleased to hear Seth echo this sentiment that I believe that Sebastian needed a restraining order against Chris. I also believe that there should have been protection orders issued to Seth's mother for the harassment and to his sister and any other woman that Chris came in contact with who he threatened. I believe that they all deserve to have protection orders against Chris. It is very common to see Yes, victims scared to come forward. It is also very common to see community members turn the other cheek and act like they didn't see or hear what they actually saw or heard because they, too, are afraid to come forward. When we're dealing with narcissistic personalities, we often see flying monkeys who are people that are willing to stand behind and do the dirty work of the narcissist and essentially help them make other people's lives miserable. And I believe that this is the reason why Seth has chosen, along with his team, 
to file this RICO Act in federal court. One major takeaway I have to give you from this entire video as a creator is that I don't believe that it is worth the drama that some of these channels are getting themselves into. At the end of the day, we need to keep it about Sebastian and about finding him, although it's very hard to know what side of right to be on when there's so much information and so much going on. But I do think it is very important to remember what happened in the past. And I say that not to stay in the past, but to keep in mind the entire picture and what has happened throughout this entire investigation from the moment that Sebastian went missing until present day. Now that it's been confirmed that there was a lot of false hope surrounding everyone coming together to find this young man, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, I can only recommend and urge people to keep praying, stay the course, and remember that the hate stops with you. You have the power and the control not to hate or spread hate to anyone anywhere, and I'll do my best to be an example. All we can do is our best, and we need to bring Sebastian home. What is it for the second fucking time? It's fucking raw, Chef. That's right, it's fucking raw. Center. No. Yes, yes. Is that raw? It can still fly. Hey, lady. The raw and stone cold. Oh. It's raw every fucking bit. Just to the naked eye, what is that? Here, here. Raw, raw. Oh. Oh.